And uh, I have prepared today uh, a presentation to talk about our impressions about Triton and GNU Health and why we have chosen to work with Triton. And uh, I try to present our, a little bit of our history of what we do and what we are doing now. Okay? So, about our company. We are a small company, uh, we are a commercial company. Uh, the company has been founded in the year 2000, but we were not the original founders of the company. Uh, later, uh, some employees of the company bought the company from the former owner, and we became associates of the company on the year uh, 2008. Okay? What do we currently do, and what does the company have been doing so far? We have a legacy VB6 ERP system, okay? It's called uh, GAT, or uh, GACH, like we say in Brazil. And we are specialized in uh, providing ERP support and development and implementations. And we are focused on technical assistance services, okay? Because uh, we have to provide the functionalities related to uh, the regular uh, parties and suppliers and customers and the financial part. But uh, this, this, start, this market has a special characteristic that it uh, has to control the works and has to control hours of work. Uh, which in English we could call work orders, or ordens de servicio. And uh, it's a legacy ERP system, it's developed in the VB6, it's a closed source system. Uh, we have thought a lot about opening its source code, but uh, it was not developed to be opened, so we think it would be uh, impossible for, or very, very difficult for a broader community to maintain its software. Uh, nowadays, uh, this software has only one maintainer that has been, she has been working with this software for 10 years now. And uh, we have tried many times to teach someone to work with this software, but we came to the conclusion that uh, this process is not worthwhile. And uh, she's the only maintainer, she's called Yasmini. Uh, and she does the maintenance and bug corrections and some minor implementations. Okay? We have, uh, we are 12 people working there, uh, including us, me and Elena, which is, here, which is here. And we have people working on the commercial part, the support, development, financing, and communication. Okay. Uh, we never heard of open source or free software uh, before when we started work in 2008. Uh, we didn't know what it was, we never heard of that. We, we thought that free software was something free as in free beer, some software that we, you could use because someone was giving it away. Uh, and we had a process of development that I'm calling here homemade uh, development. We developed everything uh, related to this software, okay? Nowadays, everything is still done by hand. For example, uh, we have to write uh, SQL queries to make uh, the simplest uh, crude operations. Uh, we use, we still use, Yasmin still uses uh, the so-called rapid application development from Microsoft. That's not so rapid, maybe even for, maybe only for beginners. Because uh, it's quite cumbersome when you have a large system to have to, to draw every screen to have to draw every form and have to draw every report. Maybe for a small system it's okay, but a big system. Agap has now like 400 different windows, so it's very difficult to maintain it, drawing each, each screen, drawing each field, okay? And uh, we still use a centralized version control for Agap. It's only one developer. Sometimes we have an assistant, so two developers. So for us it's not a big problem. Uh, to have this old-fashioned way to develop that kind of software. It was not a big problem. And one thing uh, I, I would like to point out here is the high cost of change. Because uh, we have now about 100 customers using the system. Uh, it's a very difficult process to try to make them change their systems. Uh, it's difficult to train a support staff. We have three people working on support. 
It's hard to train a commercial uh, people working on the sales area. We have two people working on the sales area. So we can never underestimate the cost of change, especially the human cost of change. Our first idea was to try to develop a more uh, advanced system because we thought that our business could only develop if we, have, if we had a more state-of-the-art system, not an old legacy system. But after, after uh, waiting those questions, af questions, after balancing those questions, uh, we, we came to the conclusion that technology is one thing and a business model is another thing. So, uh, of course, if we are talking about software, your business depends on the kind of technology you use. But there is not a, a direct link between an advanced technology or a better technology and uh, a better return on your business, or it would be easier to make business only because you had a better piece of software, okay? But one thing happened, and that's when we really started to study free and open source software, and that's when we really came to the conclusion that it was the time to change, because Microsoft, uh, I, I have chosen a cartoon from Mafalda because we're here in Buenos Aires, my wife loves Mafalda, and I like Mafalda very much too. And, uh, Microsoft decided that uh, the programming language wouldn't exist anymore and, sh and uh, the company simply switched to another platform and it provided some compatibility between the languages, it provided some migration path between the languages, but in practice it was super difficult to make this kind of transition. Uh, so we decided after that that we would never again depend on a unilateral decision uh, made by a company that, of course, we do not control, uh, that could jeopardize from day to night our business that we have been working so hard to, to, to create, so working so hard to maintain. Uh, and we started to look for some alternatives. We didn't uh, choose Triton as a first alternative. I came from a Java background. I didn't even know Python. Uh, we only heard about Python as a kind of toy language, a kind of, uh, it's, it's okay to use Python to do some uh, prototyping and to do some tests and small software, but we didn't think it was possible to build a, a, a real system, a real production system using Python. We didn't know that at the time. And we started to look and just Googling uh, open source Java ERPs. And we met some systems, we met some pieces of software that we started to study. Uh, one that I would like to point out is Open Bravo. That's a system that's developed by a company in Spain, uh, in Barcelona especially, in Catalonia. And uh, we started to study the system and we made some uh, training, a uh, paying training with the company. But we still felt that we were somehow attached to that software vendor because uh, they developed their own custom license that it was a little bit like a Mozilla license, but uh, they could, for example, put their name inside the system, they could put some advertisement inside the system, and uh, you, you, you would be uh, uh, somehow locked to that uh, software supplier. But the idea seemed interesting. And uh, we came to know other pieces of software, of course, uh, that are very well known, like Linux, like Apache, uh, they, that are licensed using a much more liberal license or a much more copyleft license, sorry. And they're not maintained by a central company. Like Nicolas said before, uh, the idea of uh, the difference between the, the philosophy of B2CK is uh, B2CK is not going to be the owner of the system. And uh, one thing that uh, concerns us now, uh, I, I mean, I'm trying to count here, I'm trying to, to, to report here a little bit of our history, but uh, I'm trying to point out some thoughts, uh, because our main concern now, that's why I asked how does B2CK uh, lives, our main concern now is how to support this kind of development. Because uh, without some funding, some, uh, some, 
some kind of serious funding, we feel that it's impossible on the long run to maintain this kind of project. Uh, we cannot maintain this kind of complexity only by the forces of our will, because it depends on, on a small number of, of, of persons. Okay? So this is an old example, probably you have heard this example before, uh, that talks about network efficiency. We have an example here about, uh, uh, that talks about two guys that they, they built, uh, spears and axes. And as you can see here, Oz is much less efficient than Adam to build spears. And the question is, uh, at spears and axes, well, Adam takes four hours to make a spear, and Adam takes uh, two hour, one hour to make a spear. Uh, uh, Adam takes three hours to make an axe, and Oz takes only two hours to make an axe. So does Oz needs Adam? Yes, he does. Why? Because if Adam makes two spears, then Oz makes uh, two. Adam makes two axes, and Oz makes two spears. They will, uh, at the end, both have saved one hour of work each. So I think this is a powerful thought because uh, I'm not originally a developer. I am studying uh, software development at the university now. Uh, my original uh, formation is as a lawyer. And uh, I have worked the most part of my life as a philosophy teacher at the university. And, uh, and of course, I did not have the ability to develop software as someone who has been working uh, their entire life on that kind of activity. Have. But there are some things that the main developers cannot do. For example, what we have been working so far the translation to Brazilian Portuguese. And uh, there are some things that even the brightest developer can do. Uh, that's a known example. It's very difficult to read your code and to find some errors that someone else who didn't write that could do it much better. And uh, we have been doing that so far. What we have been doing now? Well, uh, another point before that. We think because of that we should work to increase the network, okay? And in Brazil at least, I don't know elsewhere, but uh, maybe in Argentina it's much more well known, in Barcelona, in Catalonia, we have a larger community, maybe in Belgium, but in Brazil no one knows what Triton is. No one, absolutely no one. No one I have met, okay? Uh, I have made one experience, okay? I have been to many different conferences this year talking about Triton, and I have made on that conference, on that conferences, one experience. I have offered a workshop. This happened at Latinoware last month in uh, Foz do Iguaçu, uh, nearby here, and I have offered a workshop called the Triton Application Platform, and we had only two attendees to that workshop. Maybe they were curious, but they never heard of Triton before. They were curious and they want to know what uh, this Triton platform is. And on that same event, I have offered another workshop called Agile Application Development with Python. <laughs> and that was the attendance to the workshop. Because when you say, I'm going to give a workshop about Triton, nobody knows, at least in Brazil, of course, I may be wrong in other countries, but I, I have decided to, to present the subject in a different way to see if there is an interest in the subject, okay, and how can we create awareness and how can we raise the attention to that kind of subject. And I think the effect, uh, the image talk, uh, expresses itself. The effect was much better than the former one. Uh, well, what we have been doing so far. We have been doing so far what I call software archaeology. Why? Because I'm not a Python developer. I'm still, I consider that I'm, I'm still learning how to program in Python. I'm studying Python a lot. And, uh, uh, but I don't feel I have a, a super, I'm not a super Python programmer. And we are now studying the, the Triton uh, platform. We're really studying the Triton platform, module by module. We have made uh, a literal, almost literal translation to, to be able 
to put that translation on version 3.8. And now we are checking every, uh, every string that we have translated to small errors, to small inconsistencies, to some kinds of terms that are not known in Brazil, especially, for example, in the accountancy module. And we are making experiences using Triton because uh, the documentation only goes so far. Okay? Uh, I believe uh, it's a recurrent subject in, in this kind of conference. I believe the documentation, of course, could be better. And uh, we are doing that. I, I, I got tired of listening and of reading people saying the documentation could be better. And uh, every time someone in a communal work says something could be better, I think the correct answer is why don't you do that yourself? And that's what we are doing, okay? Uh, but, of course, we are writing that documentation in Portuguese. Uh, we have created a wiki, our wiki. Uh, of course, it's not our wiki, but the only guy who writes at that wiki is me, so it's my wiki. You know? <laughs> uh, but I, I, I'm taking module by module, reading every screen, trying to perform every operation, uh, looking at the database to see what happens, uh, looking at the lines of the database to see what happens, and then I go to the documentation, and uh, after you see something happening on the database and you go back to the documentation, and then you go to the mailing list, uh, sometimes it, it starts to make sense. We, are, we have now finished reviewing the stock module, because we have a customer uh, that we have sold the training on stock module, uh, and we have to be uh, quite uh, capacitated on stock module. I'm going to talk about that customer in a minute. And we have now just finished to review the entire accountancy module. And it was extremely difficult to do that because it's a very technical subject. I'm not an accountant too. And we have first to uh, work with an accountant so he could help us to understand the financial uh, reports and the registers. And they are a, a little bit, but just a little bit different from Brazil, but they can really uh, be used directly uh, in Brazil. But that's what I call software archaeology, okay? We, we, we have to find bits and pieces uh, to try to make sense of a greater and broader picture. Uh, of course, the community is great. If we put uh, any question on the main list, this question would be answered immediately, almost immediately. Uh, every bug reported we have sent, it has been corrected in one hour, two hours. Uh, Axel asked what would happen if the plane crashes. When I saw Nicolas and Rick here, I thought, who is looking at the bug reports? Okay, but uh, <laughs> but uh, what we have been doing so far is sometimes we find some bug and uh, Cedric corrects the bug, Nicolas corrects the bug, we do some testing and that's okay. The process is very efficient, very rapid. We're very pleased to see that. Uh, okay. Next, what we would think, it's our impression, okay, maybe we are wrong, but we think Triton is an excellent framework or platform for developers, but it's not a great platform for end users, okay? If you know what is a code repository, if you know what is a code review process, if you know what's uh, a pull, a pull request, okay? Uh, if you know what means looks good to me, and so on and so on. If you know how to use Mercurio, it would be at home. But it's not an easy process, okay? Uh, I have to learn that myself, okay? But my experience tells me that it's not a common knowledge. It's not, uh, uh, it's very difficult to find someone for example, it's very difficult to find someone to hire, at least in Brazil, of course, that uh, can master all that uh, stack of technology. Okay? And I think after you have mastered that, it's not difficult at all to work with Rhythm. It's not really difficult. Okay? Uh, I think Cedric is being every day more and more polite and more and more uh, for coming that. <laughs> Thank you.
the last commit I've made, uh, I, it was wrong, the commit message was wrong, and Cedric answered me. This time I will correct that for you. <laughs> Next time you do it right, okay? But this time I will correct that for you. And I was, whoa, I'm very pleased. I, I'm starting to feel that Cedric's starting to like me after that. Okay? <laughs> But I think the system could be more friendly to uh, naive users, to end users, because I think we could create a broader community. And that's what we, uh, uh, in, on the limit of our capabilities, we're trying to do. We are creating that public documentation regar regarding Triton and regarding GNU Health. And we have been uh, contacted by different companies, by different people, because of that documentation. We have not spent one cent doing advertisement on Google AdWords, on Facebook, or anything like that. We only have created that documentation that is far for, for, from complete yet. But because of that, uh, we have been contacted by uh, different companies, especially in the health sector, okay, in Brazil. Uh, in Portugal and in Angola, okay? Because if you write GNU Health or if you write Triton in Google in Portuguese, our reference or the reference to our documentation is the first one that shows up, okay? So that's a good thing to do. But here are some thoughts, okay? Uh, this website problem has been uh, uh, raised before. Uh, I think the site is very simple. Okay, it's very easy to maintain sometimes, but I think it could be more friendly, okay? Maybe I can contribute to that. Maybe I can contribute to that. The actual one seems, this was pointed out before, I'm not the one saying that, but seems over that project, okay? That's why I brought a camera, that's why I brought, I'm going to take pictures, and I'm going to post that, and I'm going to broadcast that, okay? I think maybe Triton, that's an idea, okay? I could have an official Twitter, even Free Software Foundation has one, why not? And I think it could have a better documentation for beginners, maybe. For example, the accountants model, uh, we have a description of the fields, but we do not have a description of the processes that happen, for example. Uh, there's a thread on the mailing list that has been started by Cedric, discussing the name of a process, that would be, I think, accountants non defro You were asking for a name for that kind of, of process. And I think that after two or three tries, no one answered, and he said, no, I had chosen a name. That would be accountant, accountancy or accountant non defro process. And there's no reference to that. Okay, for example, it's just an example. And that's what we are trying to make. Of course, with our limitations, uh, not trying to ask repeated questions, not trying to ask dumb questions, trying to follow the list, and trying to study what happens inside the system. We're not talking, of course, about the architecture of the system. We're talking about its functionalities. Okay? Well, our work so far. We have been talking about uh, Triton and GNU Health, uh, depending on the kind of event. Uh, this year we have been to FISLI, that's uh, a, a large event, the largest free software uh, event that happens in Porto Alegre, in the south of Brazil. We have been to Rio Info, it's an event that happens in Rio. It's a, it's a, it's a proprietary and free software and hardware event. We have been to LatinoWare last month, and there is an event in our city called YPython that we were able to present. Uh, and talk a little bit about Triton, about the, the, its structure, its idea, its maintenance, a little bit about its history, okay? We have been working on this wiki, like I mentioned before. We have been working on the translation. Uh, and we have created on GitHub, sorry, uh, a Triton resources directory. What is that? There are some resources available on a Google wiki on Google Code, that's now dead. Google has canceled that project. We have some resources available on Triton website. We have some resources made by the community, for example, here in Argentina, in Barcelona. We have many tweeters that tweet uh, every day, or almost every week, I don't know, about Triton. And every time, and we have uh, somewhere, and sometimes, news, some news about Triton and about GNU Health. 
So I have created this directory. It's only a simple uh, directory, okay? I will late, later uh, show this directory to you, and uh, I will propose a challenge, like they have made the sticker uh, 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 bottom. We have made some stickers from Silix and from Triton and from GNU Health too. And I'm going to give those stickers if you make a pull request or a push request. I always mix that because in Portuguese they're uh, the opposite. To the repository, adding a link. Okay? Uh, if you know some resource, if you know some news, if you know some Twitter, if you know something about Triton, and if you know something about a GNU project, please make a pull request and we're going to add that reference on uh, that GitHub. Uh, that, that director can be copied, can be put on the main website. I don't care where it's going to be. But it was an internal resource that we were using when we were looking for reference about uh, Triton. Uh, so far, I have uh, made some links, and Cedric uh, made two pull requests to that repository. Okay, so I'm going to mention, after I talked yesterday to Nicolas, two cases. Okay, two interesting cases. We have been working with GNU Health and Triton. One case is in this hospital in Belo Horizonte. It's a public hospital linked to a university. It's called Hospital Universitário São José. It uses a proprietary uh, ERP system for health, but it has a, a kidney transplant clinic uh, that uh, felt that they could use better information regarding the assistance to the patients. Why? Because the ERP system of the hospital is an ERP system, it's not a health system. It deals very well with invoicing, with calendar, with uh, patients and, uh, and some prescriptions but it was not capable of dealing with the kind of information that kidney transplant clinic uh, had. They have a, a system called the white sheet, okay? And it's uh, because once a, a patient has been uh, transplanted, he uh, will be a patient for the rest of his life. So he has to go back monthly at least to the clinic and to register uh, some uh, clinical data about uh, temperature and uh, the presence of some substances on the blood, how the, the drugs that he's taking to avoid rejection are, are behaving. And this list is done by hand in a, in a big uh, cartoon board called the white sheet. And what we have been doing so far, we're making the specification of that kind of, uh, of information, okay, so that the doctors can register that information directly on the computer and uh, generate the analysis that they find useful. Like, for example, the survival analysis, uh, the survival, the global survival of the patient, the survival of the transplant. What we are using there, we are using GNU Health for patients, prescriptions, appointments, plus this custom module. We have not finished creating that custom module yet uh, because the doctors cannot agree uh, easily on which kind of information they want to register, okay? But we are importing data from the, the ERP of the hospital. We are directly importing the data from a, an Oracle uh, database using uh, Proteus and Python plus a cron job. It's a very simple script that reads some views created, created on the, the database and updates the, the Triton database, okay? And we are running, uh, that's the best uh, stack that we have been using so far. It's super easy to configure. We have been running on there on CentOS and using Supervisor to, to keep the process running, okay? Uh, another interesting case is, uh, is this company called Isol. It's a company from Luanda in Angola. They found us because we have written a documentation in Portuguese. And uh, they, they came to us looking for GNU Health because they have a customer that uh, wanted to uh, manage uh, medicine supplies, okay? Uh, this customer is a public sector customer called uh, Direção Provincial de Saúde de Huila. Huila is a province in the, the south part of Angola. But after we have started the training, what we have done? We have uh, built the server, uh, uploaded the server, created the supervisor, uh, backup routines and so far. But after we have started the training process, 
uh, we realized that they didn't need GNU help. They needed a stock control system. So uh, we have switched from uh, GNU help because they do not have prescriptions, they do not have uh, uh, they do not apply directly uh, the, the medicaments to the patients. They only control the stock of uh, public sector uh, medicaments. So what we are doing there? We are training there, them remotely, and then they are going to train uh, the people and the, the workers on Lubango, which is the name of the capital city of Huila. Okay, That's an interesting case. And they came to us just because we have made the translation to Brazilian Portuguese. Okay. Well, future projects. We are uh, formatting now uh, a system to uh, to participate on different public concurrences in Brazil. Okay, dealing with uh, I, I don't know how to say that in English, but health surveillance. I think it's a good way to express that regarding especially dengue, malaria, and leishmaniosis. What we are planning to do. We are planning to create a very simple mobile client. Okay, maybe it could it could even be an offline mobile client, just to replace a paper form that the uh, health agent writes uh, some information about the places, the houses he visits. For example, the health agent is responsible for an area inside the city, and he visits every house writing down if he finds uh, larvae and uh, eggs or if he finds any evidence of Aedes aegypti, the, the, the vector for dengue, for example, for dengue, chikungunya, and Zika, the tropical diseases, okay? How is this process made in the greatest parts of city in Brazil? It's done by hand in a paper form, and after that, that data is transported to an Excel spreadsheet, okay? The project we are uh, trying to create is to create a very simple mobile client so that uh, this agent would not have to write that on a, on, a, on a paper form. After that, we are going to transport those data to GNU Health and try to, depending on the case. Uh, GNU Health already has a module regarding that kind of information, for example, about dengue, that could be easily customized to to different kind of data that each city would want to, to, to register. And after that, the next point that we have been developing with the health surveillance of Foz do Iguaçu is to plot that data on a map using uh, postages as a, as a geographic database and QGIS as a, a plotting platform to do that. Okay? The idea is to create uh, reference, geo-referenced reports about uh, dengue, rabies, leishmaniosis, or every kind of uh, zoonosis uh, that the health surveillance uh, system has to deal with. Okay, that's a future project. We are working on that now. There are some research uh, uh, offerings open in Brazil, and we are trying to apply to that in order to get some funding to do that. Okay. In the end, like I mentioned to you before. Uh, I took the liberty to create some stickers, okay, in order for you to contribute to the project. Uh, this is a sticker from our company. I'm going to give it to you, okay. Please uh, stick them to your laptop. And uh, I have stolen the trademark from Luis and created a, a sticker for GNU Health using the, the raised hands, okay, that I thought it was very beautiful. And I, I took the liberty also to create uh, like a slogan to Triton, okay? Because I think that the description of Triton, the website, is a description uh, for developers, okay? And for nerds, it's not a description for human beings. But I took some <laughs> words there, and I am proposing this kind of slogan, taking the words from there, modularity, scalability, and security for business. Okay, just to, to singularize what the program is and what is it for. Because if someone starts to read that Triton is a three-tier high-level application <laughs> developer platform, I don't know what that is, okay? <laughs> okay, that's it. 
thank you. Uh, if you want to contact us and uh, know some information about what we're doing, uh, this is my email, my personal email, uh, my Twitter account, my GitHub account, and uh, well, our our company is called Silix. Uh, the, the if you if you Google that, you're going to find it uh, right away. It's different from an Argentinian company called Silix. I don't know if they're here. Okay. <laughs> Uh, maybe it's a coincidence. Sometimes people ask if, if we, we are the same company. I don't know if that happened to you here. And uh, that's it. We, we would like to present. And uh, it's very nice to be here to meet uh, the friends. We talk all year round on the, on the email, on the IRQ chat. What? Question. Ah, and of course, if you, if you have any questions that I can answer that uh, we, we can discuss here, uh, well, thank you very much.